U.S. Airways Flight 1549. On January 15, 2009, U.S. Airways Flight 1549, an Airbus A320, took off from LaGuardia Airport in New York City at around 3.25 p.m., heading for Charlotte, North Carolina. The flight had 150 passengers and five crew members on board, just like any other regular flight between the two cities. But shortly after takeoff, disaster struck. The plane flew into a flock of Canada geese. The birds were sucked into both engines, causing them to lose power. With both engines down and nowhere to go, Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger and First Officer Jeffrey Skiles quickly realized that they couldn't make it back to LaGuardia or another airport. So, in a split-second decision, they decided to land the plane in the Hudson River. Sully, in a remarkable feat, managed to safely bring the plane down on the water. Everyone on board was able to exit the plane safely, and nearby rescue boats arrived fast to help. Miraculously, no one was killed. The NTSB investigated and found that the crash was caused by the bird strike, which had taken both engines offline. The NTSB commended the crew for staying calm under pressure and making the right decisions. They also praised the design of the plane, which helped keep everyone safe, and the quick response from the rescuers. This event, often called Miracle on the Hudson River, raised awareness about the dangers of bird strikes and led to better safety measures, along with more focus on pilot training for emergency situations. American Airlines Flight 587 On the crisp morning of November 12, 2001, Flight 587 took off from New York's JFK Airport bound for Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. At that time, the Airbus A300 was carrying 251 passengers and 9 crew members, most of them excited to reunite with family back home. But shortly after takeoff, at around 9.16 a.m., things turned upside down tragically. The plane hit turbulence from another aircraft, a Japan Airlines Boeing 747 that had just taken off ahead of it. The first officer tried to stabilize the plane by making sharp rudder movements. Unfortunately, these sudden movements put too much pressure on the aircraft's tail. The stress was so severe that the tail broke off completely, sending the plane into a deadly spin. Both engines detached during the chaos, and the plane crashed into the Bell Harbor neighborhood in Queens, New York. Tragically, all 260 people on board lost their lives, along with five people on the ground. When investigators from the NTSB looked into the crash, they determined that the excessive use of the rudder by the first officer caused the tail to fail. They also found that certain aspects of the plane's rudder system combined with American Airlines' pilot training at the time might have contributed to the tragedy. Air France Flight 447 Air France Flight 447 was flying from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Paris, France on June 1, 2009. The plane, an Airbus A330, was modern, long-range, and built with safety in mind. On board were 216 passengers and 12 crew members. Everything seemed normal as it took off, but sadly, no one had the idea that it would never make it to Paris. A few hours into the flight, the plane ran into a storm over the Atlantic Ocean. The turbulence was severe and ice crystals blocked the sensors that measured airspeed. This caused the autopilot to shut off, leaving the pilots in charge. But the block sensors gave the crew confusing speed readings, and in their struggle to figure out what was happening, they made a crucial mistake. They pulled the nose of the plane up too far. This caused the plane to stall, and instead of leveling out, they kept pulling back, making things worse. For nearly four minutes, the plane stayed in a stalled state, losing altitude rapidly, before crashing into the ocean and killing all 228 people on board. It took two years to find the wreckage. When the flight recorders were finally recovered in 2011, investigators discovered that pilot error and insufficient training were major factors in the crash. The stall warning had sounded more than 75 times, but the pilots didn't respond in the right way. This tragedy made it clear that pilots need better training to handle emergencies like high-altitude stalls and to manage situations when automated systems fail. Blue Flight 292 JetBlue Flight 292 was a regular passenger flight from Burbank, California to New York City on September 21, 2005. The Airbus A320 had 140 passengers and six crew members on board, ready to cover the nearly 2,500-mile journey. But shortly after takeoff, the pilots noticed something was wrong with the nose landing gear. It wasn't reacting properly. Air traffic controllers confirmed the issue, spotting that the nose wheels were stuck at a 90-degree angle, pointing sideways instead of straight. To handle the problem, the crew decided to head to Los Angeles International Airport, which had longer runways and better emergency services. Before landing, the plane circled for about three hours to burn fuel, making the landing safer by reducing weight and fire risk. During this time, passengers were informed of the situation, and the crew prepared them for an emergency landing. 
At 6.19 p.m., Captain Scott Burke safely landed the plane on LAX's runway 25L. Despite the sideways nose gear, the aircraft stayed on course and came to a stop without anyone getting hurt. The nose gear tires were damaged, but the landing was a success. The NTSB investigated the incident and found the issue came from a failure in the nose gear's anti-rotation lugs, which caused the wheels to lock sideways. This was linked to a design flaw in the brake steering control unit, which couldn't fix the problem due to a loss of hydraulic feedback during the landing gear's operation. Repeated pre-landing tests of the system had also caused wear and tear on the lugs. Since there was no approved way for the crew to reset the system during the flight, they had no choice but to make the emergency landing. In response, Airbus issued new guidelines in October 2005 to address the issue and prevent it from happening again. Egypt Air Flight 804 On May 19, 2016, Egypt Air Flight 804 was scheduled to fly from Paris to Cairo, connecting France and Egypt on a routine route between Europe and North Africa. The plane, an Airbus A320, carried 56 passengers and 10 crew members, making a total of 66 people on board. Everything seemed normal as the flight took off, but just a few hours later, tragedy struck. About three hours into the journey, while cruising at 37,000 feet over the Mediterranean Sea, the plane vanished from radar. Automated messages from the aircraft reported smoke in the forward laboratory and the avionics bay beneath the cockpit. Shortly after, the plane made sudden sharp turns, descended rapidly, and crashed into the sea, killing everyone on board. The investigation that followed was complicated and led to differing conclusions. Egypt's Civil Aviation Authority released a report in 2024 stating that an explosion in the gallery area behind the cockpit likely caused a fast-spreading fire. The fire, fueled by oxygen flow in the cockpit, caused multiple systems to fail and incapacitated the crew. However, the French Bureau of Inquiry and Analysis had a different take. They suggested that the fire may have started in the cockpit, possibly from a fault in the oxygen mask, which could have been ignited by a cigarette. At the time, smoking in the cockpit wasn't prohibited, and it was reported that Egyptian pilots often smoke during flights. These conflicting reports made it hard to pinpoint the exact cause of the crash, but the incident raised serious concerns about in-flight safety. Spirit Airlines Flight 3044 On October 2, 2021, Spirit Airlines Flight 3044, an Airbus A320neo, was about to take off from Atlantic City Airport in New Jersey, heading to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The plane was carrying 102 passengers and seven crew members. But just as the plane started speeding down the runway at about 5.47 p.m., it struck a large bird. Turns out, it was a male immature bald eagle weighing about nine pounds. The bird got sucked into the right engine, which caused a fan blade to break. This led to vibrations in the engine and a fuel line to burst. The leaking fuel caught fire, causing a blaze in the engine. The flight crew acted quickly and stopped the plane at about 60 knots, just short of 2,000 feet down the runway. Seeing the fire, they decided to evacuate the plane. Passengers and crews safely slid down emergency slides, though a few, three passengers and one crew member got minor injuries during the process. The NTSB looked into the incident and found that the bird caused a fan blade to break, which led to the fuel line failure and the fire. The bald eagle was much heavier than the six pound bird weight used in tests for that type of engine. The NTSB pointed out that it's important for airports to manage wildlife better to reduce the risk of bird strikes, especially with larger birds like bald eagles. Delta Airlines Flight DL-1648 On November 11, 2024, Delta Airlines Flight 1648, operated by an Airbus A320-200, departed from Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport bound for Denver International Airport. The flight carried 148 passengers and six crew members, following the usual route between these two cities. The journey proceeded smoothly at 32,000 feet, and the plane landed safely in Denver at around 1.30 p.m. Upon arrival, maintenance crews discovered significant damage to the aircraft's nose cone. Interestingly, the flight crew hadn't noticed anything unusual during the flight, and the passengers were unaware of any issues. Delta Airlines reported receiving a signal about a mechanical issue in the plane's nose, but there was no indication that the plane had been struck by any object. The aircraft taxied to the gate without incident, and fortunately, no injuries were reported. Delta's maintenance teams began a thorough inspection to determine the cause of the damage. While there was speculation that it might have been a bird strike or a collision with something in the air, no evidence of such incidents was found. The FAA noted that the plane's nose cone had collapsed during the flight for reasons still unknown. Hawaiian Airlines Flight 35 the Hawaiian Airlines Flight 35, an Airbus A330, took off from Phoenix, Arizona, heading for Honolulu, Hawaii on December 18, 
2022. The plane was carrying 278 passengers and 10 crew members on board, but about 30 minutes before landing in Honolulu, things took a dramatic turn. The plane hit some severe turbulence while flying at 36,000 feet near Maui. The sudden jolt threw passengers and crew around the cabin, leaving 36 people injured, 11 of them seriously. Some parts of the cabin, like the ceiling panels and overhead lights, were damaged. But somehow, despite the chaos, the crew managed to land the plane safely in Honolulu at 10.50 a.m. The NTSB looked into what happened and found that the turbulence was caused by the crew's decision to fly over a storm rather than avoid it. They were aware of the unstable weather and thunderstorms in the area, but chose to fly over the storm cloud anyway. After the incident, the crew admitted they should have taken a different route. Following the event, Hawaiian Airlines reviewed its procedures and made sure its crews were fully trained to avoid severe weather. They also worked with the NTSB to understand what went wrong and ensure it didn't happen again. UPS Airlines Flight 1354 On August 14, 2013, UPS Airlines Flight 1354, an Airbus A300-600, was flying a cargo route from Louisville, Kentucky to Birmingham, Alabama. The flight had two crew members on board just transporting freight between the two cities. At around 4.47 a.m., tragedy struck when the plane crashed just 0.7 miles away from the runway in Birmingham while attempting to land. Both the captain and first officer were killed, and the crash and fire destroyed the plane. One issue was that the airport's longer runway, which had special equipment to help with easier landings, was closed for maintenance, leaving the crew with fewer options. The NTSB investigated and found that the main reason for the crash was that the crew failed to monitor the plane's altitude as they tried to land. This mistake caused the plane to crash into the ground. Other issues included the crew not setting up the plane's computer correctly, which left them without clear instructions for the descent. The NTSB also found that the captain had performance issues that weren't addressed during training, and both pilots were tired, partly because of sleep problems before the flight. 